Hello. I'm Father Kenneth Metz, a priest at All Souls Catholic Church in Sanford, Florida. In my first video on the death penalty, we reviewed the Lex Talionis, the law of retaliation, as it appeared in the Bible and how this was interpreted by the Catholic Church through the centuries. In this video, we'll look at the teachings of the last three popes regarding capital punishment, giving the basis for their adjustments. I find a helpful way to understand the development of the Catholic Church's stance against capital punishment is to follow the changes made in the Catechism of the Catholic Church since the 90s by Pope John Paul II and Pope Francis. I will also note what Pope Benedict XVI taught on the death penalty. In 1992, the Catholic Church approved its first universal catechism in over four centuries. In the words of Pope John Paul II, this text was to serve as a full, complete exposition of Catholic doctrine, enabling everyone to know what the Church professes, celebrates, lives, and prays in her daily life. In the short span of time between the first edition, which is provisional, and the final official Latin version issued in 1997, the section pertaining to the death penalty was significantly revised a number of times. Well, what brought about this change in the teaching presentation of the Church's moral stance? Well, the key distinction between the original and the final version of the Catechism's exposition on the morality of the death penalty is the way in which the purposes of punishment are defined. In the first, or the provisional, the edition, the section on the death penalty upheld a traditional Catholic principle, namely, the right and duty of legitimate public authority to punish malefactors by means of penalties commensurate with the gravity of the crime, not excluding, in cases of extreme gravity, the death penalty. And this is a position I outlined in my first video on the death penalty. Following much input from bishops around the world, the 1997 final text asserted that the primary effect of punishment is to redress the disorder caused by the offense. And it stated then, if bloodless means are sufficient to defend human lives against an aggressor and to protect public order and the safety of persons, public authority should limit itself to such means because they better correspond to the concrete conditions of the common good and are more in conformity with the dignity of the human person. The earlier edition of the Catechism in 1992 retrained the tra traditional teaching of the Church, permitting the use of capital punishment to defend life and protect public order, thereby redressing the disorder caused by the offense. But the preference for the use of bloodless means is in line with the whole tradition of the Church, because even in lawfully carried out justice for the sake of society, Christians are called to show mercy, not vengeance. Now, between the publication of the first provisional edition and that of the official Latin version in 1997, Pope John Paul II had issued an important encyclical entitled The Gospel of Life, Evangelium Vitae, 1995, that took up a number of moral issues related to the defense of human life and dignity, including the death penalty. The Pope situated the issue alongside of abortion and euthanasia as sins against life. In this encyclical, he made opposition to the death penalty a pro-life issue. He wrote in paragraph 56, it is clear for these purposes, the public order, people's safety, to be achieved, the nature and extent of the punishment must be carefully evaluated and decided upon and not go to the extreme of executing the offender except in cases of absolute necessity. In other words, when it would not be possible otherwise for society to defend itself. Today, however, as a result of steady improvements in the organization of the penal system, such cases are very rare, if not, quote, 
practically non-existent. And so when the second edition of the Catholic Catechism of the Catholic Church came out in 97, some readers were surprised to discover that the purpose of capital punishment as restitution of public order had been removed from the discussion. In addition, the corresponding notion of capital punishment as a deterrence to further capital crimes was also reduced. It appears that the Pope's analysis on capital punishment in his encyclical had had an impact on the Vatican Commission charged with overseeing the revisions of the Catechism. Now, once the 1997 version of the Catechism eliminated the protection of public order as an argument, the only justification for the deterrent value of capital punishment was that it defended human beings against an aggressor. And in looking at the revised version of the text, one would have to conclude that the only purpose that would render an execution morally licit, according to Catholic teaching, was the defense of society from particular criminals whose sentencing is under consideration. The new paragraphs in the Catechism concluded with an assertion taken directly from Evangelium Vitae that implied, quote, a very restrictive application of the death penalty, close quote. And the new text, based on John Paul's moral analysis, maintains that, quote, the cases in which the execution of the offender is an absolute necessity are very rare, if not practically non-existent, close quote. It appears, then, that the revised Catholic teaching on capital punishment as found in the Catechism is closely associated with the influence of Pope St. John Paul II. One other point that should be noted about these changes in the Catholic Catechism is this. By narrowing the permissible situations for the moral application of the death penalty, the editors of the Catechism followed John Paul's lead in reorienting the issue to the broader discussion of legitimate defense. The Pope reasserted that the primary purpose of punishment is to redress the disorder caused by the offense, which includes rectifying the violation of personal and social rights. Yet punishment also provides the offender with, quote, the condition to retain and regain the exercise of his or her freedom. In other words, the legitimate use of punishment to defend the order of justice should include remedies for both the victims and the perpetrators of crime. In 2011, at his November 30th general audience, Pope Benedict XVI encouraged countries around the world to end the death penalty as a legal sanction. Addressing a group of pilgrims gathered in Rome for an international conference on the topic, the Pope said he hopes that their deliberations, quote, will encourage the political and legislative initiatives being promoted in a growing numbers of countries to eliminate the death penalty, close quote. And then more recently, the latest announcement was something that occurred on August 2nd, 2018. And that was that day that Pope Francis approved changes in the Catechism of the Catholic Church that we have seen before. It now reads in section 2267, quote, recourse to the death penalty on the part of legitimate authority following a fair trial was long considered an appropriate response to the gravity of certain crimes and an acceptable, albeit extreme, means of safeguarding the common good, close quote. And according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the death penalty now is no longer admissible under any circumstances. The changes made in the Catholic Catechism reflect an increase, increasing awareness of the dignity of the person, that that's not lost even after the commission of a very serious crime. In addition, new understanding has emerged of the significance of penal sanctions imposed by the state. And lastly, because more effective systems of detention have been developed, which ensure the due protection of society and its citizens, the society itself no longer needs to deprive the guilty of the possibility of redemption by taking that person's life. So consequently, the church teaches 
in the light of the gospel that, quote, the death penalty is inadmissible because it is an attack on the inviolability and dignity of the person. And she works with determination for its abolition worldwide, close quote. In the midst of the church-wide developmental growth and understanding since 1992, the Catholic bishops of the United States have continually spoken out against the death penalty. The local bishops here in Florida have denounced the use of capital punishment again and again and again, to no avail. Compared to the rest of the world, in the 195 countries recognized by the United Nations, 53 still use the death penalty regularly. 28 have not excluded, executed anybody in the last decade, so they're considered to have abolished it de facto. Seven have abolished it except in exceptional circumstances, such as war crimes, and 105 have abolished capital punishment for all crimes. In the United States, 22 states still have the death penalty. To be more consistently pro-life was one of Pope John Paul II's goals during his long term as leader of the Catholic Church. In his encyclical, The Gospel of Life, he spelled it out so very clearly. Abortion, euthanasia, and capital punishment are all offenses against the life God has given us. The present stance of the Catholic Church represents its desire to be consistently pro-life. So thank you for watching. And remember to visit our website at www.allsouls.sanford.org. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube page. Have a great day. God bless you.